Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session about advancing diversity and inclusion efforts in the workplace. This is a topic that I know is near and dear to my heart, as, as I'm sure it is to Zahida. So we are super excited to be here today to be able to provide um, everyone on the call uh, some, some maybe some first steps, maybe some next steps of how you can advance your diversity and inclusion efforts. Um, you know, if you do have any questions, uh, go ahead and type them into the Q&A or the chat box that you see on your screen, um, and we will have a Q&A session towards uh, the end of the, the slideshow. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so a little bit about myself before we dive into the topic at hand. My name is Kevin Wang. I have been with Warren Averitt for a little over 10 years now. Um, I started off as an auditor, so I'm an accountant by trade. Um, um, and I, I recently, well not recently now, four years ago, moved to uh, our Birmingham office. And now I serve as our firm's director of innovation. Personally, um, I was born here in Alabama, in Birmingham, actually. Um, and so my whole life, I've uh, either lived in Alabama, in Georgia, or in Florida. So definitely representing the Southeast. Um, English was my second language. I, uh, you know, we did grow up, my brother and I did grow up uh, in a Chinese household where we spoke Chinese first, um, and obviously went to kindergarten and elementary school here. Um, you know, I do love to travel around the whole world, uh, immerse myself in different cultures, um, eat their different uh, cuisines and foods. So uh, I'm definitely a world traveler at heart. But with that, I will pass it over to uh, Miss Aida. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, my name is Zahida Iqbal, and I am currently an account executive here at Warren Averitt, and I graduated from UAB in 2018. I was an intern here and then transitioned full-time here. Kevin and I have very similar upbringings, well, a little bit different. English was my second language, but I was not born here. I was actually born in Afghanistan and moved to the States in 2003. January of 2003. I spoke zero English, so it was it was a cultural shock. I was eight years old, and my, friend, my upbringing as an immigrant in America was unique. Uh, I was welcomed with a lot of possibility, opportunity, and kindness on one hand, but on the other hand, I did experience xenophobia and discrimination, but this also gave me a bit of a compass for my life and of who I am today, so my judgment has sharpened and it has attracted me to environments that are diverse and inclusive. Um, so going forward, I think it has taught me to appreciate those with different perspectives and viewpoints just as I would like mine to be appreciated. And I feel like Warren Averitt has done just that. And I'm happy to be here. So in today's agenda, we are going to be talking about advancing diversity and inclusion efforts in the workplace. Kevin will talk a little bit about the importance of that in a firm or in a company, a startup, a business, and share some statistics and numbers with you guys. And then I will circle back and talk a little bit about what Warren Averett is doing here and how you could implement these strategies in your company. So Kevin, you ready? All right, well, thank you. Yeah, so just wanted to start off our conversation today talking about the word diversity. And, you know, in general, when most folks think about or hear diversity, they immediately think about race, right? And so um, I, I did want to kind of expand that definition of diversity to what you're seeing on, on your uh, screen here, that the different uh, factors and different traits that you should be thinking about uh, when you hear the word diversity. Now, um, you know, they, we do, there is a uh, general consensus that there are what we call visible traits. So you're seeing that on the top three, you know, whether it's race, gender, or age, those are in general considered more visible traits. Um, and then there are obviously invisible traits as well. So when we talk about education or different experiences, you know, marital status, disabilities, uh, those are in generally general considered more invisible traits. So really diversity isn't about one or a few of these, it's about all of these collectively. Um, 
And so really it's a, uh, you know, diversity and inclusion are always, we always talk about them at Warren Averitt together. So, um, you know, having an inclusive environment is just as important as having a diverse environment. And they're not, you know, if you have a diverse environment, that doesn't necessarily mean that you also have an inclusive environment. Um, you know, the way I look at inclusion, it's really, um, you know, it's really about making an effort uh, to make sure that all of the diverse talent that you have in your organization is being utilized um, and really removing all those barriers so that uh, you're getting the most out of that talent. So what are the benefits of diversity? And if I could go to the next slide, um, uh, you know, a lot of folks um, take a look at diversity and say, okay, well, is it just about uh, the corporate social responsibility? Or is it just about checking a box? You know, some, some companies work with the federal government and federal programs, and those folks have to, um, you know, meet certain metrics. Um, and so that's, that's more of the compliance. But is there something deeper about uh, having a diverse and inclusive workplace? Well, study after study show that having um, a diverse and inclusive environment actually leads to better results. If you go back, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you know, whether you're a for-profit company or whether you're a not-for-profit organization or even a governmental entity, uh, you know, if you're for-profit, obviously, you know, you know, the bottom line is what you're concentrated on. Um, you know, not not for profit organizations. You guys are you guys have your um, your missions to, to to serve a certain purpose, um, and in governmental entities, obviously, is to get the best use out of uh, taxpayers' funds, right, and to to provide services to the citizens of that. Uh, of that governmental entity. So whether, you know, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, what type of organization you are, diversity and inclusion ultimately leads to, ultimately leads to better results. And so, um, you know, as a, I mentioned that I was an accountant by trade and I would be remiss to not pull up some numbers uh, to back up what I am I'm, I'm, uh, saying here. So let's look at some studies here and some research done. So this one specifically is done by McKinsey and Company, who's a research firm. And they strictly look at diversity and how that correlates to financial performance. And so looking at the top line here, uh, they looked at strictly ethnic diversity and said the top 25% of companies that were ethnically diverse, compare that to the bottom 25% of companies. And what they found was a large gap, 35% uh, more better financial performance if you were ethnically diverse. Uh, same thing, if you look at the second part of this, uh, they looked at strictly gender diversity and found that that gap was 15%. So really looking at them uh, both together, um, you know, we're seeing generally, we say a 25% better, better financial performance uh, when organizations are ethnically um, and gender diverse. So that's a, uh, that's a key number for, for you to take down. Um, another research uh, study done by, this one done by the Australia Institute of Company Directors, uh, looked at inclusive cultures. So not necessarily diverse, but looked at inclusive. Uh, inclusivity and if you know found that they were two times organizations were two times more likely to meet or exceed financial targets and that relates a little bit to what we just saw with the with the uh, McKinsey study three times as likely to be high performing six times as likely to be more innovative and agile and a little bit more about um, innovation here, uh, you know, when, when organizations bring in different backgrounds, different perspectives, different experiences, you know, they found that companies and organizations are more likely to be able to think differently, think creatively, and uh, come up with different, you know, services, different products, different offerings for their customers to consume. And so that's kind of where the uh, the whole diversity and, uh, and uh, inclusion uh, correlates with innovation and agility. 
And then lastly here to your right, uh, eight times more likely to achieve those business outcomes and goals that are set within an organization if, uh, if, you're, if you have an inclusive environment or an inclusive culture. And then the last study here, I uh, just wanted to bring up Harvard Business Review looked at um, you know, diversity and how that relates to innovation. And I just mentioned a little bit about how the two correlate with each other, um, but companies that had above average total diversity had 19% higher innovation revenues. And again, innovation revenues are defined as um, you know, new services, new products, uh, new offerings to their customers or even, you know, potential prospects or, or, or future customers, right? Um, they also found that not only does it impact the top line of revenue, um, it also uh, has a 9.9% increase in earnings margins uh, on average. So that, that, you know, that really impacts uh, the bottom line as well. So, uh, with that, I will pass it over to Zahida to talk a little bit more about what we are doing in, at Warren Neighborhood. Yes, thank you, Kevin. And I just want to reiterate his slide. Those numbers are really important. And this right here, the stuff that I'm about to get into, are just the beginning for our firm. The only way for us to go now is up. And you implementing these in your business company startup will have you a better tomorrow. I was talking to Kevin about that earlier, how it's the little things that kind of matter that we might not, not may not matter to us, but to our employee next door. So a little bit about what we've been doing here at Warren Avery. So number one is the diversity and inclusion impact group, which is dear to Kevin and I, because the early days of our group were Kevin and I going to lunch, just grabbing and lunch anywhere we would pick like the most ethnic places. And we started to have other employees join us. And then later on, our CEO, Mary Elliott, caught word of our small group that we didn't think anything of um, and kind of gave us our wings and made our group more legit. So that's how it formed. And now company-wide, we have 50 plus members. And this is kind of important for companies and businesses because this gives employees a safe place to kind of talk I might be scared to tell my boss something, but I have this important group I can go to and talk to about things and makes it makes really a big difference. So having that safe place in a work environment is very important. And secondly, our CEO, Mary Elliott, signed the CEO Action Pledge, which is an, a commitment to foster a culture of diversity and inclusion in our firm. And then there was also a I Act Pledge, which was for employees like us that share the same exact initiative. So it kind of gave us power. This wasn't leadership forcing stuff down our throat. This was us kind of starting it and making it go up with leadership's full support right behind us. So Mary Light also brought Marcia Sampson Johnson from Southern Company to uh, speak to our firm in January and kind of have these conversations about being uncomfortable. So being comfortable while we're uncomfortable. So this helps people like just open up and talk about it and really learn what it actually is, like what unconscious bias really is and what diversity really is. And as Kevin said, our mind goes to race when we think about diversity. So lastly, floating holidays, which uh, oh, unconscious bias training. So after Marsha Sampson Johnson came to speak to us, we started talking about doing an unconscious bias training, which um, every employee will participate in it in, 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 small, in small groups for each of us to be aware and how to manage these biases that we might have and didn't know. And we believe small groups work better than large groups because we kind of shy away when we're in a group, big group and our, we might be scared to share our opinions. Rather than a small group, we can just facilitate, but also make it fun, give it that it's informational, but it's also fun and we can talk about it. So now lastly, floating holidays, which is my favorite because um, this uh, we added two floating holidays in our firm that we can take uh, that is not included in the Christian calendar. So for me, I like to have eat off, which is my big holidays and it happens in the summer. 
So it lands on a Thursday or a Friday. And having that day off to spend with my family means so much to me. And although you might not think it's a big deal or you might not think it's a big deal, it's a big deal to me. And it's those holidays. And I know Kevin- yeah, For me as well, I was gonna jump in here. Um, you know, Chinese New Year is a big holiday, obviously, in, in China, and, and we celebrate that. And um, as you may know, it lands usually, you know, January, late, late January, um, February time frame. And that's usually one of, you know, the probably the busiest time for our firm. And so um, having that floating holiday really uh, was a benefit to me and being able to, you know, take that day off, take New Year's, uh, Chinese New Year's off to celebrate that with my family. You know, prior to having that, um, you know, the only time that we could really celebrate it or if I could be involved is if it happened to land on a Sunday, right? So because the Chinese New Year um, is based on a lunar calendar, you know, you, it, it always changes. And so um, now I can take one of those floating holidays to celebrate Chinese New Year with my family. Right. And it's so important because think about how big New Year's Eve here is to you. Mm -hmm. So imagine how big it is to him or how big it is for me to take my holidays off. And then finally, uh, Warren Averett, we have, um, we made this thing called Warren Averett Way. We have 30 fundamentals in it. And number nine, I mean, number 29 is embrace diverse perspectives. So this basically means thinking outside the box, a problem I probably don't know how to do. Kevin probably knows how to solve quicker than I can and, and getting his versa. help and yeah. vice versa and getting that help from him and just the way he thinks and his viewpoints and perspective might be different than mine, but it's the idea that being different, we work better, we're more effective, and the numbers, as Kevin showed, we're going to pr produce more like that. And for our diversity and impact group, our mission statement is being different is powerful, mm -hmm. and this is kind of what embracing diverse perspective means. And as I end this, I do want to say implementing these little things to us that are big things will make your company grow tomorrow and you'll be thankful because nowadays like some clients may not want to work with your company if you don't have anything diverse in your company um, so it's important to think about that and then um, just to end it here thank you guys for joining us today and we'll get into any questions that you guys may have the next slide is um, resources uh, the CEO action Marsha Sampson Johnson and just unconscious bias examples that you guys might be interested in and our inf LinkedIn information is in, on the first slide so if you guys have any questions that you might want to ask us privately, please email us or message us and we'd be happy to answer anything that you guys may have. Do we okay. have any uh, questions on the line? So we will give our participants a um, couple minutes to think about any questions that they want to ask. Please um, type those into the Q&A box or raise your hand and um, we'll call on you to ask your questions. I do want to say that um, I've learned some really good things uh, during the webinar. And one thing that I really appreciate is just talking to other people about um, different cultures and different religions and things like that. And it's just always been fascinating to me to learn how, um, how other people are different, but the same. That's right. And, yeah. and we share some things. So I really appreciate you sharing your personal stories sure, sure. Um, with us today. And um, I would have never thought about Chinese New Year. So. <laughs> Sometimes you got to bring stuff up, don't you? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. I don't see any questions coming okay. in. Um, um, I know that we do have um, some people on the line with us who may have some follow-up questions. Sure. Yeah. And um, if you are not able to um, get in touch with Kevin or Zahida because maybe you didn't catch their email address, um, please contact the chamber and we'll get you in touch with them. And this webinar will be available for playback on the chamber's YouTube channel. And I want to thank Zahida Iqbal and Kevin Wang for spending some time with us today, um, sharing your stories and helping us learn and grow. Absolutely. Thank Glad you. to be here. Yes.
Thank you, Warren Averett. Y'all have a great day. You too. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye.